I'm pretty sure there's been a lot of light novel readers who've actually been waiting for this moment, okay? For me, I didn't I know little little by little of the details in terms of novel illustrations possibly, but not in terms of like greater detail if anything. This episode might be this recap might be short for the time being. I mean like um, I'm very tired right now and I need to catch up on a couple things and I'm kind of dirt I need to wash up. So if anything else, let's just get this started. We have to it that um, Asuna shows up in the underworld, of course, and ends up meeting State Rone and what's her name again? I don't know, but one thing for sure is the red hair girl. They end up leading her to Kirito when she's looking for him, and she's happy to see him, and she needs to talk to her leaders if that's okay, and she ends up clashing against Alice Chan, which apparently seems like they to be they seem to be very much on par with each other in terms in terms of swordsmanship skills. And let's talk about Asuna, okay? We seen her like what she's capable of, capable of in season one, and then we see her in season two, and then now we see her in this season, and she has not lost her touch yet, which is a good thing. I'm pretty sure a lot of Asuna waifu lovers or something like that has been waiting to see her in action but you know when it comes to her her earth ability she can only use that a couple times before she can't use it anymore because it's a it pretty much hurts her you know in a certain way anything else besides that um we have to it that asuna and alice were clashing against each other until bukule the first integrity knight shows up to stop it, and we have to that Asuna wants to talk with him and the others about the situation. And Alice and Asuna were actually at each other's throats for a while. Av it's actually at each other's throats right now. Let's not forget, man. I mean, from the beginning of the series until now, let's not forget that Kirito's a freaking magnet, okay? It doesn't say so exactly, the tags, and many people don't put it in there, but it's a fr he's a freaking magnet. He's a freaking magnet, okay? Okay, enough of me blabbing on. We have to that Asuna explains the situation to all, all of her, all the people right now, especially some soldiers and then the Integrity Knights about the situation. You know, someone's after Alice Chan and is trying to get her because she did something about breaking the seal on her right eye. Something that's very rare and invaluable that they cannot let go of or they have to capture in other cases. That's really simple as it is. If you want a lot more detail, you're better off watching the episode yourself. I don't mean to be very, mean to be a jerk or very vague on the situation, but you know, to put it to simple terms, Asuna explains to them that someone's after Alice Chan due to the fact of what she did, you know? After they, after she tells them about her world and then something about the seal on the right eye, code 871, and everything all together, she can't really like, um, give out other pieces of information, but she did say that she could get Alice Chan out of here and she'll be safe, but Alice is like, no, I'm not going to leave this world. This is my world. I had to defend it, you know? And Austin's like, more of a reason to get the heck out of here, because if they capture you and, they, and you get captured by them, they're going to destroy this entire world. The people from earth to sky, from the oceans, waters, they all be destroyed right in the blink of an eye if you get captured. And... And something about the right eye they talk about and everything all together and what's been going on here and there. We have to it that Asuna gives as much information as she can about her outside world. And she says it's actually filthy and ugly, but it's actually something that it's not that bad, you know? I mean, I want Alice Chan to make a decision herself once we take her out there, you know? Although Alice Chan says she would agree with that to go to the outside world, but not until she saves this world first. Because they had to deal with the guys, which we all know who they are. Freaking Mr. Psycho Blondie guy, and then, then that and then that other guy who likes player killing all the time, you know? You guys get the you guys get the idea or fuss about it, obviously. From the get-go, that's if you're up to date and understand what the heck is going on here. If you're not, and you're just doing something that just to skip information and just get straight to the very up to modern point or something or present time, you'll be confused as heck. Yeah, call me Mr. Mr. Luck, Luck not crazy maniac, but yeah. Anyways, the meeting that Asuna had without a lot of crazed up um, detail or confusion, Asuna tells him about her world, her outside world, and everything all together in order to like um, get things. Okay. And it's starting to like, um, whatchamacallit, that they're trying to fix the situation, or she wants to fix the situation. Sorry for being a little like, pausing in the moment, like, um, here and there, but yeah. 
Anyways, yeah, the meeting Asuna had with everyone else, she tells them everything what she knows here and there, and she's about to go visit visit Kirito, you know? Which is really, really hilarious, and Alice shows up and says, Okay, let's make a deal. <laughs> which I go like, oh my gosh, dude, this is just hilarious right now, because Alice makes a deal with Asuna by saying, Here, I'm gonna tell you this, okay? I'll let you see Kirito. In exchange, you tell me everything you know about him, and I'll tell you everything what I know about him. And Austin is like, okay, but it's going to take more than one tonight, so yeah. And Alice is like, okay, how long did you know Kirito? And Austin is like, well, I've been his part fighting partner for two years. I dated with him for like many years, and I lived with him under the same roof for two weeks, and... Pretty much, I'm his girlfriend. Just say it like that, okay? And Alice is like, well, I fought with him one full night. Hmm. <coughs> I've been taking care of him day in and day in and day out, night night and day, for six months under the same roof, you know? And I think my mind, oh my gosh. It's like you're having a competition. Like, you're spending time with this guy. And then Ronya, you know, create this little kohai, says, well... I know him a bit too, you know, I mean, I became his pupil and he treated me to some cakes and food. I'm like, oh my gosh. And then Kirito's teacher shows up and says, hey, I can't help it but come here, you know. I became his teacher and I t passed, him on, passed him on with some sword, sword skills, you know. I'm thinking my mind, oh my gosh, dude. The people or certain fans won't admit it, but I think we all should admit it right now, okay? This freaking series SAO always had a harem, okay? There is no denying that. I mean, think about it. From Season 1, and then Alfheim, and then Gun Girl Online, we get that Shooter Girl, Gun Girl, Shooter Girl, and then, let's see here, and we get this! I mean this! What else do you want me to say? I mean... Deny it all you want, but there should be a harem tag in this freaking like um, series. Or oh, I think there is, but not entirely to that point. But anyways, um, <laughs> you guys get the drill. I mean, like, um, <laughs> looking forward to seeing where this goes. Because the way how the episode ends off is like, um, since Asuna sees Kirito with two swords, you know. I mean, Kirito with two swords, yeah. She ends up saying, well, they call him dual world in Kirito, you know, in the other world. And she go, and Alice is like, okay, let's start from there. And they end up smiling at each other as if they were friends. But let's be honest, like, even though they were smiling at each other and maybe try to get along to get the idea here and there. Let's just say, um, <laughs> they're going to have a competition to, like, who's going to get the gold prize or platinum prize, okay? <laughs> That much I can tell you. Anyways, this episode was okay, I guess fine, and I'm pretty sure it's funny as hell for a lot of novel or SAO fans out there. And I'm pretty sure if I watched this with a giant audience, I would have laughed hard. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people will have laughed too and give a couple claps, etc. Heck, I can imagine I can imagine a lot of things happening anyway if I watch with the, watch this with a giant audience, dude. <laughs> okay. That's about it, people. Gotta end it here. Gotta go, like, take care of some stuff, of course. And, yeah, until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm Alpha Zero. Have a good day, and I'll see you guys next time, alright? Peace out. Bye-bye. Toot-toot-toot!